Good evening, Internet. Today we're engaging in a little heistery. Monaco is a stealth action game released on April 2013. It allows for up to four player co op, local and online. It also has a fairly robust single player mode. To start, we'll have four characters we can pick from, but I'm picking the locksmith to begin with. Each character has a specialty. At the start of every mission is a small bit of story to set the scene. Environment items can be interacted with by holding against them. You do have to hold the key to activate them. If you let go before you finish the action, it'll be aborted. Yellow diamonds are coins. One of the main objectives for every level is going to be collect all the coins. Naturally, there are guards. But this one isn't a threat. We'll come back to him later. Up here, sneaking is a very important skill to learn. By sneaking, you can move silently, and you're less noticeable. While you're running, your footsteps will make noise, which uh, guards can hear. By sneaking, your footsteps are silent, and you're also less noticeable. By holding down one of these keys, you can see your heads-up display. On the upper left is a mission timer, along with the uh, floors in the stage, as well as how much gold is left is on each stage. On the upper right is the current character, and who all is playing if you're on multiplayer. In the bottom left is the current objective. In single player, you get an amount of lives based on characters. If the current character goes down, you can pick another one. If the all four of them go down, well, then you're boned. And right here we have stairs. Stairs will lead you between the floors of a level. You are also invisible while you're on the stairs, so it's a good getaway from guards if you need to. Up here is our first laser gate. Laser gates will set off alarms, which are those uh, little red and white boxes right below me here. Guards will come and investigate alarms when they go off, and they'll be instantly alerted on you. You can circumvent lasers either with a uh, computer virus or by turning off the power. Power boxes will remove all the electronics in a given area. If a guard can reach the box, he'll come investigate and turn it back on, but none of these guards can actually reach this box, so. Here we have a ladder. Ladders are pretty useful. They offer movement between walls, usually something like a maintenance shaft. While on ladders, you are completely invisible to guards. So, much like the stairs, they can be a pretty good getaway if you're uh, in need of an emergency. And here we have a bush. Like ladders, bushes are cover. Unlike ladders, if a guard sees you going into a bush, they can follow you. And if they follow you, they can definitely hit you, and uh, then you'll need to find another getaway. And here's the first guard we can actually mess around with. Guards have three levels of alert. When they first see you, a question mark will slowly fill up. When it fills up white, the guard will come to investigate whatever, the, whatever caught their attention and made them investigate. And then the question mark will start slowly turning red question mark turns red, the guard will change to an exclamation point. At this point, the guard's fully alert on you. They're uh, focused on chasing you down and beating you to death. You might notice a white exclamation point following me. That's the last known place the guard saw me. As long as I can break line of sight with the guard, what he'll do is he'll try and find that white exclamation point and see if he can see me from there. As long as the guards are still trying to go back to their patrol path, they can quite easily alert on you again. But it's fairly easy to break line of sight and stay out of the way until they go back to patrol. Sometimes while you're looking at the blueprints, you can notice uh, small footprints. And those footprints are where a guard or somebody else is walking around. If you're perceptive, you can use that to kind of inform you on where a guard currently is before you step out into the wild unknown. 
So hopefully you can get around them without making too much of a fuss. And out this door we have our getaway van. Usually the last thing you'll do in a given mission is get to your getaway vehicle after all of your other mission objectives are complete. And once you grab all the pieces of gold in a level, you get the cleaned out. At the end of every mission, you get a summary of how much time you took and how much gold you missed. Every piece of gold you missed is going to add 10 seconds to your time. you also see what's unlocked next, so next time I guess we'll be hijacking some hairpins. But uh, first, what about that one guard we passed by who was uh, typing up on the computer? Let's take a look at him. This is Pierre. Pierre will pop up a few times throughout the story, and he'll either toss out some simple advice, like uh, white-shirted guards don't carry guns, or he'll offer some color commentary on what's going on. It's a neat little diversion. That's it for now. See you next time.